Thank you for joining me for evening prayer this evening. I'm Pastor Vance Mortensen, coming to you on behalf of the Racket Lake Chapel in Racket Lake, New York. Tonight we will be using one of the Compline services uh, provided by the Celtic Spiritual Community. Please join me in prayer. To save, to shield, to surround the hearth, the home this night and every night, we invite the sacred three. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in, in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. O Father, O Son, O Holy Spirit, forgive me my sins. O only begotten Son of the Heavenly Father, forgive. O God who is one, O God who is true, O God, who is first, O God, who is one substance, O God, only mighty in three persons, truly merciful. O God of life this night, O darken not to me thy light. O God of light this night, close not thy gladness to my sight. Keep your people, Lord, in the arms of your embrace, shelter them under your wings. Be their light in darkness, be their hope in distress, be their calm in anxiety, and be their strength in weakness, and their comfort in pain. Be their song in the night. Tonight I have a reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. Jesus said all these things quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get thee behind me, Satan. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. And Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their lives must lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? And indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sin sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in glory with his Father, with the glory of the holy angels. One of the commentaries that I like to read written by biblical scholars uh, regarding the lessons that we read every Sunday. You, if you went to a church this morning, you probably heard that gospel. One of the uh, authors of the commentary said, uh, preachers may not want to preach about this because it is a hard lesson to learn. You know something just popped into my head as I was reviewing that. It's a little story. I'll call my friend Bill. Bill was very career-minded. We worked together in a uh, corporate department, if you will, that uh, was very pie-in-the-sky kinds of things. We looked at technology that was appearing on the horizon that might benefit our corporation. Bill got a promotion, and with that promotion came a new job. And that new job was the director of an operations unit. Now, if you've worked in operations, just imagine a factory, because you are on the factory floor. One of my friends remarked to Bill, you know, uh, that's going to be quite a challenge for you. Uh, you're really going to go where the rubber meets the road. Bill replied, Knowing what that meant for him, he said, I'm going where the rubber is under the road. 
Funny how we make associations. Well, that's uh, what I heard Jesus saying for those people who listened to him and followed him, and especially his disciples. We hear so many wonderful things in the Gospels, and our impression of Jesus is often a very happy, calming, soothing view of the Gospel. I would have to say at a moment's notice if somebody asked me, uh, where do my values come from? And I would say, they come from the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor, and so forth. And they come from the answer that Jesus gave to the question, what is the greatest commandment? And that, of course, is love and serve God and love and serve your neighbor. That's not what we hear in this gospel. This is not what people may call a prosperity gospel. It's not a happy gospel. It is a gospel filled with reality that the Christian life is one which is full of hardship. If we follow after the rewards of this world, very often as a Christian we are going to come in conflict with that world. So it adds a new dimension to our understanding of the gospel. In peace I will lie down, for it is you, Lord, you alone, who makes me rest secure. Be it on your own beloved arm, O God of grace, that in peace I shall awake. May the peace of the Spirit be mine this night. May the peace of the Son be mine this night. And may the peace of the Holy Spirit be mine this night. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may peace be with you this night. Have a blessed evening. <laughs>